Greetings, friends, viewing us on the internet, wherever you're viewing us from. The last time we looked at a scripture which most persons don't like to deal with, most ministers don't like to deal with, I'm going to deal with it, but deal with it in a strange way that does not add up in scripture. And it's Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. And it reads, let me, re let me read 13 and 14. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses. Not some all. Is that what the Bible says? All your trespasses. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. God blotted out the handwriting of ordinances which was against us, which is contrary to us. Now, I have heard ministers preach that this handwriting of ordinances was the record of our sins. Some of them said it was, some of them teach that is the uh, ceremonial law. What God brought it up was the law, which is primarily the Ten Commandments. That's the law. How do I know that? Again, because the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 7 said this. He said the law is good. The law is spiritual. He said, but the problem is I'm carnal. He says, so the law affects me. Now, if the law is spiritual and we are carnal, then the law is contrary to us. In other words, because we have this fleshly body, and remember, let me show you something. Before the fall, Adam had to have a law. Why? Because Adam, the Bible said the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Adam heard God all the time. Adam lived from the inside out. So the light of God was in Adam, and Adam lived from the inside out. After the fall, Adam started to live from the outside in. It means he has years when Adam, how he lived, was it to live from the outside in? He lived from what he can see and feel and touch. And this is what makes a man carnal. The carnal man views things, he thinks in this way. If I can feel it, then it's there. I can't feel it, it's not there. Are you hearing this? Yes, sir. So Paul said, I just, no, it is years and has become a paradigm. It has become a paradigm. So it's natural for us to do that. Are you hearing me? Yes. Now the other problem, the major problem was this. God made Adam and Eve and he helped withheld some important information, uh, 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 important knowledge from them. And that's what? The knowledge of good and evil. Yes, sir. The knowledge of good and evil. And the thing that destroys people is the knowledge of good and evil. Let me explain. Let me explain. You go into a building, you enter a building, and you have your shoes on, and you are not aware that there's a sign saying you should not wear shoes in this building. Now you were happy and excited and, and going around nicely until you saw the sign. And then the same person who was feeling so good suddenly feels bad. Why? Because they saw the sign. In other words, this knowledge affected them. So some things that you may have done and you may not have realized that this thing is wrong. In that society, in that environment, environment, you understand? Yes, sir. So the minute you come to that, you feel badly, and the next thing happens, you feel condemned. 
But the Lord is like that. Paul said, I was good until the Lord said, don't commit. He said, Paul said, I was good. In other words, I could have seen 21 to have this and want and to take from them. And it was no problem. Until the Lord said, thou shalt not covet. He said, the same commandment slew me and I died. That's the Bible says. Yes, Final scripture for me. The same law that was there to give life, it killed. The, that's why I said the law kill it. The letter kill it. You, you, you understand what happens? Because I would be good until the law comes in. You know how many persons can sing by themselves? Amen. Until they're in front of people. A crowd. How many bathroom singers we have? Everybody. Amen. We sing in the bathroom. Until there's a crowd in front of you. And the crowd now becomes your judge. You see the bathroom, you have no judge other than your soap or your body wash. They're the only judges. When you come into a, 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 a there's an audience and the judges look at you now. As long as it's judged, there is law. So the judge will be judging you based on how well you hold the note. How they're judging you on that. They're judging you on your voice. No, not all of us are, are blessed with angelic voices. You understand? So guess what? as soon as you see a crowd, you can't sing, you can't pull a note. You, you, you can't even try it. Why? Because judges are in front of you. Oh, let me hear you. I remember as a little boy, I learned a poem. And when I got up and I saluted smartly. And I said, strike the nails, all right, boy. And I couldn't remember anything else. Because the whole church were looking at me. I turned to tears. I was a little boy, I don't know if it was six or seven or seven or eight, I don't know. But I thank God for my mother who hugged me, comforted me, and then said, You're gonna do it again. So you're gonna do it again, don't worry. And she ensured I got it, and then she went up there and she gave me the encouragement, and I went up there and I did it again. And after that, I never turned back. I ne was never afraid of an audience again in my life. Thank God for my memory. You understand? So by the time I got to 11, and we had a school concert, and a Ford Farm was supposed to chair the school, school concert, and became afraid because got cold feet at the last minute. My teacher said, Philbert, go up and chair it. Even though I jumped the drain and <laughs> my shoes were wet and I had them outside drying. I went up and cheered it with my bare feet because my mother gave me the confidence. You understand? So, so what the law does is judge it. This is why you can't sing in public. You know how I know my daughter can sing, Candy? Let me tell you how I know. I drop her in Barbados and give her a microphone and she built it up. I drop her in Canada, in London, in USA. In Barbados, in Jamaica, and she sang. And she sang. Now, many of you can sing better than Candy. I know, I know. You say well, I can sing better. I know. But if I put you, in, if I put you in front of the church, you're not finding words or two. Why? Because the law is watching you now. People are judging you, and you don't know what it is to stand here, and people looking at you with a microphone in your hand. Just looking at you. You can't even remember what you were about to say. I have met boys in the country remember what to say. Amen. Amen. I, yeah, I had somebody on, on my program years ago. Could remember what they had to say. But because the whole of Ghana is listening to them. Look, look at this. 
Romans 7, 9 says, For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. No, sin is a consciousness. Let me explain to you what sin causes sin revived. Sin is the consciousness that says, I'm wrong, I'm supposed to be punished. I am, it, it actually is a thought that says, I should go without my rightful portion. So Paul said, I was all right. Now imagine you're in a function where you don't know that you are breaking some law they have in this place. And you are eating at a table. And then somebody said to you, you came in with the wrong color. Everybody's supposed to have on a blue shirt. And you didn't even pay attention. No, I mean, your plate is full. You had it stuff in front. You can't even eat it anymore. So, um, could you excuse me? You died. See, it's, a, it's, a, it's an emotional thing. It's, it's a spiritual thing. It's a conscious thing that happens. Yeah, yeah. So Paul said, I was alive until the law, the commandment came. And this thing that Adam brought in us, you see the knowledge of good and evil, is what kills us. Adam and Eve wanted something that God didn't want him to have because it would bring one word, condemnation. Hallelujah. And as soon as you feel condemned, you're going to die. He said, I was good. The commandment was ordained to life. I found to be unto death. For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. Now, after the Lord God saved us by his son, he went and he fulfilled the law. God is not putting it back. Hallelujah. Because it will continue to kill us. Amen. It's contrary to us. Amen. Now, all those persons who are advocating for it, those persons, they like to delve in death. You got to be a death dealer. Because as soon as the law comes, it's going to kill you. See, some persons think that when they hear the commandments go, so are you saying then that you can kill us? That's the first thing they ask. Yeah. Are you saying no people can kill? Yes, they can kill. Yeah. <laughs> but guess what? The love of God constrains us. Hallelujah. God, the Bible says, you shed his love abroad in our hearts. Are you hearing this? So the love of God constrains us and we don't do it. Well, many times we feel like killing some people. Is you, some of you think, well, you feel like poisoning them or choosing them. No. If you didn't call him, you feel like calling him a fool. Jesus said that's killing. Yeah. Not me. Yes, sir. Paul called the Galatians fools. He said, oh, foolish Galatians, not what you bunch of fools. Yes, sir. First thing, so you can kill. So you can commit adultery. Yes. yes. The love of God constrains us as we walk along it, it begins to work more in our hearts Are you understand remember this is not our paradigm our paradigm is life for I had two for two See, you, you understand this so what God in his goodness and love for us removed the law hallelujah he removed the handwriting of ordinances which is, against, which is against us. It's contrary to us. Paul said, I was alive until this thing came. And I'm giving you an example. You can be alive. You can be, listen, A woman could be all right. She has on her nice white pants and she's there at the party. She's having a good time. And somebody said, you had an accident. Her party is over. Party done. Yeah. 
You understand? I heard a story of somebody who was singing and entertaining a group of persons, and as they're singing, the dentures flew out. You know, entertainment finish. A junkie saw, said, Man, pick up the thing, water the pipe, and wash it up, put it back in country. And continue singing. What? Why it happened? Because you feel ashamed. Adam said, and as soon as you become ashamed, you become afraid. Because people are judging you now. You understand? I knew a story of a lady, she was walking. We don't go into the market and in the village, and a guy said to her, You drop something. And when she looked back, it was a napkin she dropped, that dropped up. She didn't drop it in the drop. She could not even go to the market anymore. She went home and cried all day. I don't know. Guys, if you ever see a lady drop a napkin, please don't tell them. Don't no, don't tell them it dropped anything. You can kill them. You, you understand? Yes. No, we we think it's all remember think it's okay. Tell them. No, don't tell them that. <laughs> Let the person go away because you can kill them. Imagine somebody singing. A beautiful song, then you tell them it's the wrong song to sing. It's the wrong song. That same person felt so good. You kill them. The handwriting of ordinances, God removed it because He wants us alive. He wants us to have confidence towards Him. He do not want us to carry any condemnation. So God said, I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I'll make a new covenant. Not according to the one I made with your fathers when I brought them out, but held them by the hand and brought them out of through the wilderness. God said, which my covenant they broke. Even though I was a father to them, God said, I broke it. God said, I'm not making another one like that. So he removed the handwriting of ordinances. And this, I don't understand how the devil has motivated people to want it to go back. And to, to preach messages of saying the law has to stay. Didn't you read the Bible? Paul, the Apostle Paul said the law deceived them. The commandment, the okay, sin by the taking occasion by the commandment deceived me. And it by and by it, by what by the law slew me. Then he goes on and says, Wherefore the law is holy and the command holy and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by the, that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. We don't go on, please. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold on the sin. God in his goodness and mercy, listen, Jesus, the, the greatest thing that ever happened to us. You, when you sing, you are the best thing that ever happened to me, you're talking about Jesus. But you got to understand, the Bible says, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for everyone that believes it. Now, if you choose to believe that Christ took your sin past present and future, then you have no problem with the commandments. But if you don't believe that, and you believe that you'll be, you have to be judged based on your works, then it was not for you. You see, when I sing he was nailed to the cross for me, I don't see he was nailed to the cross for us because he was not nailed to the cross for everybody. He was nailed to the cross for me. You have to know that he was nailed for you too. Amen. On the cross crucified. For me, for me he died. Amen. No, he may, not have been, he may not have died for everybody, but he died for me. Yes. So for some persons, 
He died for some people, not for them. For them, they have to live right and keep the law. Are you hearing this? Does this make sense to you? This is the word of God. The handwriting of ordinances is the law. It is not not anything else. That is what's contrary to us. These are the ceremonial law. Ceremonial law not contrary. That's nice. It's easy to keep. That's where you can keep and boast. It's the moral law. So when Jesus came and, and came after the scribes and Pharisees, he did not deal with the ceremonial law. He said, it has been said, thou shalt not kill. Momentarily, if you're angry with your brother without a cause, yeah. you're in danger of judgment. If you say to your brother, thou fool, rock or thou fool, you're in danger of hellfire. You know what Jesus was saying? You want to see the essence or, or, or the full uh, extent of this law? This is it. He said, it was said, thou shalt not commit adultery. But if you look at your brother with lust in your heart, you, your sister, a woman rather, you already committed adultery with her. You know what? You know what ministers do? You know what ministers do? They took what Jesus said and said, "Yes, you say, you say, yeah." If you look, but you see, as long as you don't touch. In other words, they're ratifying what Jesus said. And then they go on to say, well, let me ask you a question. If you look at the bill, the same thing, paying the bill. They're trying to make, they're trying to, they're trying to nullify what Jesus said. Because they can't, dis, they can't deny that when they look, they have thoughts. They can't deny that. They know that. But they're saying, uh, yeah, looking. And then they go and say, temptation is not sin, but yielding to temptation is sin. And they don't understand that what God is calling, Jesus was calling sin, is just looking and having the thought. Yeah. So they think as long as they don't touch. Yeah. One man say, you see, you can look, but you see, if you, as long as you look away quickly. <laughs> you see, the, it forces people to become hypocrites. Yeah. Force them to become hypocrites. Beloved, I'm, I'll say it, I said it before, that's what I'll say it again. This is what the devil used to make the church, as we know it, primarily female. Because honest men know that they're going to look. They even go beyond looking. You understand? Yes, sir. And it's a natural thing. So something is natural, it's the, they say it's unnatural and demonic. And some men say, well, I ain't coming to church. I say, I don't want to come to church. Because Satan orchestrated that. And orchestrated it, listen. And if you keep the men out, see, Guess who here in the world? Women. Even the early church, the men were there that Paul said to the women, don't talk, don't talk. When you go and ask your husband. Ask your husband to don't. Because we talk across. And I, what do you think about two women? I said, Shh. People think he was saying women mustn't talk at all. No. It was questioning. They would question, ask questions, and debates, and start their own debate. You know how it goes with women? So I'm preaching, and you look, you see two women having their own conversation. Oh, yeah. So Paul said, shush sh 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 them. <laughs> when you have to go home, if you have a question, ask your husband. I don't have no husband to ask. That's another story. What's the one you said? The handwriting of order nonsense. The, 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 the law has been blotted out. Has been blotted out. Uh, 
Hallelujah. Some crazy person say, oh, what God did. He took it from the tablets of stone and he put it on our hearts. Yeah. Are you stupid? <laughs> Didn't you really blot it out? Wonderful. As a matter of fact, if you go to Romans, Romans, not Romans, Hebrews chapter 8, it puts it, it puts it far more forceful than that. Hebrews chapter 8. I'll show you something. I close with it. Are you, you timing me? You weren't timing me. Look on the thing and see how much time I use. My skills. From verse 13. Remember in, in, in um, and the writer is quoting Jeremiah chapter 31. In that he said a new covenant he had made the first old. Now that which decayed and waxed it old is ready to vanish away. Please go. That's it. Yeah. Let's go from verse 8. Some verses don't know what I'm talking about. For finding fault to them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Judah, house of Israel, and with the house of Judah. Listen to this. Not according. Do I say not according? Not according. To the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continued not in my covenant. And I regarded them not, said the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind. Mind, and write them in their hearts yeah. and be to them a God and they shall be my people. Now listen. Back a little bit. Hear what they say. God said not according to the covenant that we made with the fathers. Which covenant may break? You know what these people say, tell you? The not according means he, he wrote it on stone. No, he writes it on heart. Let me explain this to those persons, those uninformed people. A Jewish boy had to know the, the, the Torah by heart by age eight. By age eight, you have to know that. That is rehearsed every Sabbath in their place. When something is rehearsed over and over, it's written in your heart. They still broke it. So if you if you're advocating God writing heart, if you hear something over and over and over and over and over and over, it's being written in your heart. Two times table was written in my heart when I was a little boy. Almost every person in our country can say the teacher took them under some tree in the cool of the day. And two ones, two, two into two, one. Two, two, four, two into four, two. They're writing it on your heart. So as soon as I see something, what's in my heart jumps out? Yeah. The, the Torah was written in their hearts, so to speak. Yeah. So with God, after the broken thing, would God write the same thing in our hearts? It has to be madness. Mm -hmm. And the same people are advocating it. Those same persons know full well that they can't keep that thing. Yes, sir. I'm not telling you now that they... We're talking about the, the, the what Jesus says if you're angry to build a lot of cars. No, we're talking about persons are literally still stealing. Yeah. We had a guy from a certain law keeping church came to our church and he was given prominence because he was supposed to be a scholar and a um, but he got the, 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 the information concerning that he hadn't to keep the Sabbath. 
and he came. I couldn't remember the guy, black suit. This is a touchy case. And, and he was given prominence because he was supposed to be a pastor of John Church. He stole our church chairs, and, church chairs and sold them. <laughs> stole the chairs. <laughs> I was a thief. I mean, come on, beloved. God said we're not make it like that. that. Then God said, this is a covenant I will make. I write my laws in your heart. God said, I'm going to shed my love abroad in your heart. Listen, listen. Read up, please. Yes. Put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts. And I'll be the, unto them a God. And they shall be my people. God said, I can be unto them a God. Unto who? Unto all them gays. On, on the LGBTQYZ, they'll come in more numbers, more um, letters just now. I guarantee you they'll come in more letters. Say, I'll be their God. Their people God? Yes, God said, I'm going to be their God. No, yes, yes. oh, some of you say, you will only be church with God. You better rest yourself. God said, I will be their God. And they shall be unto me a people. You mean sir, he was Sir Miles God? Yes. So you don't like it. What do you like? You don't change it. You see, God is not God. You are not God. And if you understand the transaction that took place at Calvary, you could under, you, you start getting an idea why you could do that. Because he was wounded for our transgressions. Hallelujah. Everything that you can commit, will commit, think of committing, he died for it. Hallelujah. That releases God to be our God. Because as long as we accept that he died in our place, then God said, I'm your God. That's what the deal is about. And they shall be my people. I don't have to teach any man to know, know God and all of that. They should know me from the least to the greatest. Now, now go down to verse 10. Or verse 9. Go verse 9. Let's, let's, no, you go up. Go up, go up, go up. Yeah. Where, where, where are we now? Verse 11? Okay, go. Go up, please. And they should, yeah, go to verse 12. For I'll be merciful to the unrighteousness. What God say? I'll be merciful to the unrighteousness. Who God said? I will be merciful to your unrighteousness. And their sins and iniquity. I remember. Oh. Here God said, I'll be merciful to the unrighteousness. Amen. You understand what that means? All, all those people writing off you and telling them they're going to hell. You better read your Bible. Oh. Now you people say, if God don't just, this first they have to apologize to Solomon Gomorrah. God don't have to apologize to those Solomon Gomorrah. Let me tell you why. Because Christ did not die for Solomon Gomorrah. Hallelujah. If Christ had died for Solomon Gomorrah, they were not, it would not be destroyed. If Christ had died for the world before that was destroyed in Adam's time, it would not, could not be destroyed. Because Christ alone would have paid for all them people's sin. You see, God didn't just say, I'm be more. No, God had to find a way so he can, he can make it legal for him to be merciful to unrighteousness. And the way he found was, he was wounded for our transgression. Yes. He was bruised for our iniquities. The just had no peace upon him by surgery. So Christ died for our unrighteousness. Hallelujah. He died for it. He paid. So God said, God, be merciful to unrighteousness. You, you see what he said? And their sins and their iniquities I remember no more. You know what God said when you sin? Remember them no more. No, no. Let me tell you this again. God don't forget your sin because you come at, because you come at the altar and cry.
Ah, Marsha Tebo. See, people think it's because they come to the altar yeah. and bend down and cry and weep, and that's why God has forgives their sin. No. What what should he what should he do to God? And nanosecond after you do whatever you do, God forget it. Could I, let me tell you further. Before you do what you do, God forget that. Because he he, he knows the beginning from the end. So shall shall over here No. Beloved, you may say, well, all the churches don't preach this. I don't care what they preach. You know what they're preaching? They're preaching what somebody told them to preach. If they read the Bible, they can't preach that nonsense they're preaching. They're not reading the Bible. You see, and they're preaching from the point standpoint where they were taught to preach this. Yes. A minister told me that the, a good a good sermon must go, must have people all to crying. Why good news should have anybody crying? Good news should make you dance. We are called to carry the gospel, the good news of salvation. If you hear good news, what are you crying about? We know a story in scripture. And there's an example of God, and that's when it's with the prodigal son. Hear what the Bible says. When he was a far way off. No, he planned we would go home and see and all that. The Bible said, while he was a far way, his father ran, hugged him, and kissed him. His father yeah. forgot that. He forgot that his boy came up in his face, wanted to beat him, and said, I want my portion. <laughs> if he had remembered that, he would run and kiss him. He said, He's coming back. Now here we have to see. Because you remember that? He could not remember that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look how many times you don't come to God because you think so you remember something you did yesterday. God, you can't remember what? No, no, people remember. And especially they working with Satan, they've got to remember. You understand? Satan reminds them, and some people are Satan's slave. So, 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 you know, you, you, you're doing something, you might be singing and, and blessing people, and Satan prompts her sister and says, remember she had done so, 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 so. Oh. Or after so, the coin says, you are the person, so, so, so. It's not you, the resource of person, husband. It's Satan's job. Mm. But God said, I will remember it no more. Hallelujah! The last verse said, In that he set a new covenant, he had made the first old. Now that which decayed and waxed it old is ready to vanish. When I say vanish. Vanish. Now, now sometimes you write on your page. And you, you erase it, but it still shows. It didn't vanish. What God is talking about is vanish. It means you can't see it anymore. It can't be seen. So the law is ready to vanish away. Now there are some persons who still they're keeping when somebody dies when they keep a uh, week and nine days and all any for the law. Because the same thing that killed them they still want to do. People like slavery. They like death. Well, and say, God, thank you. Beloved, you are you have not called, you you God called you now to live without condemnation. Hallelujah. Don't go anywhere where people will condemn you. Go where you'll be lifted up. As you hear people preaching death, pick up your Bible and run. Don't know anybody to preach death to you. Take your Bible up and run. Take off running out of the church. Run out of the church. They're preaching death. You leave church, you feel guilty. 
You feel terrible because they are ministers of death. This is supposed to be life. God don't want, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. You stay in the consciousness that Christ died for you. He was nailed to the cross for me. Till he has we partake of the body and bread blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, he was nailed to the cross. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. Listen, 2,000 years ago, he died for everything you can possibly do. You were not born and he died for your sin. How come his blood loses power? Because you got saved last week and three weeks after it can't cleanse you anymore. We sing the song, it shall never lose its power. We don't believe it. If you believe it, you can't preach that foolishness to tell people unless you come to the altar and cry and this you, you will not be forgiven. What madness is that? Listen, I don't care who preach it. It's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It's not the word of God. And they have God's people in condemnation and guilt. Yes, the handwriting of ordinance is removed. Hallelujah. End of story. It contrary to us, and God removed it. I'll close with this. You know, this morning I was meditating on this topic, and I thought of this. I remember going to um, George Edwards, and this man had a, a member of the church had what you call a. A property on a golf course. Later on, as I started to play golf, I knew what it was to have a property on a golf course because we rented properties like that a couple of times and as we traveled. And the guy said he wanted us to steal the property. You don't use it, you know. Then he said, you know, do you golf? So because if you can golf, you can golf all the time. I, I, I had no idea but golfing. And then you know what he did? He said, and hanged on the wall, there's a key to a car under the house, in the garage, a Mercedes Benz. He said, use it. Now, I was not that confident that I can drive in any way in the States. So. And with my mentality, not thinking, God showed me something. A poor man would not even lend his son his bicycle. His bicycle. An old preggy, some you don't know a word. Was a preggy when the fender twisted the back like this. Oh. And the chain's slipping every two minutes. And front brakes not working. And uh, He's not lending his son that. Because he's poor. he's poor. You see, people are so poor in their subconscious, they can't believe that God can be so gracious Hallelujah. and so good. Hallelujah. I will forgive, oh Lord of God. Because they're measuring like themselves, that like, I will not forgive that. You are not God. Yeah. God alone is God. Hallelujah. You understand? Hallelujah. Because they think like that because of the poverty. Yeah. Pouring what? Pouring love, pouring goodness, pouring kindness. The Bible says he is rich Hallelujah. in goodness, rich in kindness, rich in mercy. So I say he is rich in mercy. Be mercy poor, kindness poor. So if I show you kindness one time, two times, I don't have more kindness to show. Woo! That's deep revelation. But God, yes, who is rich, rich in kindness yes. and rich in mercy. Yes. God so rich, he can give kindness to the whole world. Yes. We can give kindness to some people <laughs> who deserve it. Yes. <laughs> oh, Woo! The man said, take the, take the car. Man has another man has a broken down bicycle, half a bicycle, and his son can't ride it. Oh, 
And he's saying the bank is hand and foot. But you know what? He's poor. A rich man, his son goes out with his car and he already had an accident. He wants to know if his son is okay. The poor man one of his car is okay. Because he's poor. Rich man says, oh, we can buy my cars, man. God is rich. That's what you can afford it. That's why you say God can afford it. He said, but if the sludge move, they'll sin, continue sinning. What God can afford it? He's rich in mercy. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's what God can afford it. Hey! God bless you, beloved. I hope you were blessed by this this morning. Amen. Amen.